All conversations and information exchanged during participation in this podcast or interaction on the doctor.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine. Hey, this is Dr. Drew, and you are listening to This Life with Bob Foy and Dr. Drew. Here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gather around the iPad because it's another episode of This Life with Dr. Drew and Bob. And we have a very special guest. My uh, favorite guest. I'll let you do the intro. hero, <laughs> Pamela DeBars, Miss Pamela, the Hi. person I spent New Year's Eve with. It wasn't that fun. It was so great. It was so different, right? Yeah. It was a very unique way to spend New Year's Eve. Well, I there's thought. two. We're going to talk about all okay. this because I've thought about it all day. Okay. So, but <laughs> but just just a beacon of love and, and, and well, encouragement in the L.A. music community forever. Well, so to that end, let me. She has <laughs> right? new, Thank you. She has a new podcast, Miss Pamela's Pajama Party. Yay! And you have groupie therapy. Well, that's my writing workshop. Tell me yeah. about that. I, I teach women's writing memoir all over the country and now Toronto and London, too. And just encouraging women to, to open up and share their lives with each other and write it out. And it's been so cosmic. It's been the best thing I've ever done. And she wrote the original memoir. What year did it come out, the first book? 86 in hardback and 87 in paperback, when it, when it became a bestseller. Right. Yeah. And it was just, it was that time, just to talk about the time that, why, for a year I wanted to have you on the show, because Drew blames the 70s for everything, and you and I love the 70s, so well, we're going to get at it. Actually, I'm a 60s girl. I'm a <laughs> okay. 60s okay. 60s, I can go more, I can sign off much more than the 70s. <laughs> now, why, why don't you like the 70s? The hard drugs? Selfishness? I, no, I feel like the, it, it just, everything went off the rail after 1968, 69. It just became, hey, whatever you're into, man. Including if it's something horrible, <laughs> and then you shouldn't consider anybody Heroin. else. Yeah, well, hard drugs. child abuse, child <laughs> sexual abuse of children, <laughs> uh, acting out on one another any fashion you desire, and without it, do- that was in New these York. These things Drew. didn't happen to me. That okay. wasn't in L.A. That what? was you, one of the things that you're prejudiced against. That weird thing where all those hairy people were having sex in New York, Pluto's retreat. That's what you're talking about. No, no, I'm talking about. What people did to each other, and they were being encouraged. If you read Christopher Lash's *The Culture of Narcissism*, which he wrote in the mid seventies, his thing was there was a culture whereby people were not supposed to concern themselves with other people's the impact of their behavior on other people at all. Just whatever you're into is what's good, and that's the value. And if it hurts somebody else, that's their problem. They're letting it hurt them. You understand? Well, now we have the opposite. <laughs> I know, I know. Yes, trust me, I'm not, well, I'm not everybody's su- a victim. I'm not super happy with it now either. But I say it all, it all yeah. unraveled after I think the it's, I think it's worse now. And, and and what you're talking about stemmed from the '60s when we all got our freedom, right? Right. Right. And I think that this, this is on my own. I, People I, didn't know what to do with their freedom. I it? did. <laughs> I certainly knew what to do with it. Yeah. But some of, but some of and that, I didn't hurt anybody. But think yeah. about think about there were to me there were three sources of that freedom. One was financial. Things were the post World War II boom was yeah. in full swing. We we had some freedom. Two, antibiotics. A urinary tract infection would have killed you in 1920. So sex carried a death sentence. Chlamydia, pelvic inflammatory disease, you're dead. Really? Absolutely. So, oh so all STDs. Lucky for us. Yeah, I know. Syphilis, <laughs> syphilis, dead. If you got tertiary syphilis, I mean, it just it was just there was no treatment for so STDs. Of economics, any time. And then also antibiotics, and then birth control. The birth control, then the birth control pill. pill. Then, I so, used to take it. In- public view man i was so proud of it i would the little round plastic thing i'd pop it open right in front of the whiskey <laughs> <laughs> but think about it look what <laughs> i'm doing baby but for the first time that's the first time in human history women yeah. can take control in, their, in the and history women, of humanity that women women could take, take yeah. control of this of course yeah. i was right in the thick yeah. of it yeah, yeah. That, that was that's people don't think about it we we're unmoored and you're trying to 
figure out what that means now. What does that freedom mean? What At do that I do time, yeah. sure, because I came from the 50s, of course, growing up. I, I'm 70 now. I watched wow. my, my mom just totally take care of my dad. He, he came first, you know, everything he wanted done was done. And, and I felt I liked that, though. Because I I observed it in a positive way. Oh, see, I thought you would have been rejecting of that. No, I it 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 worked for them. So I thought, well, I would like to do that. Only I would like to do that with someone who plays the guitar, or you know, who moves me in that way, sings whatever. Some some band member, because I love you know Elvis, then the Beatles, and of course I was the right age for all that. So I that's what I wanted. I wanted to take care of a a rock guy the way my mom took care of my dad but then of course things blossomed and changed when i had my own girl band and i got a lot more self-confidence right yeah and then so one of the things i always think of is the music that you grew up with i mean she was a part of things that that you just know what happened afterwards she was there when it was beginning to happen there's a man named graham parsons he invented a genre of music one person yeah right she was there, right? I was, yes. And one of the things that <laughs> I like to friend. think about is he had the luxury of being what I was too, which is a trust fund kid. So he didn't yes, have to worry did. about <laughs> m- making money off of music. You were so a trust he could, fund kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? I did not realize that. <laughs> I still get a check. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my God. I would love to be But you know what I'm saying? I always, wait, wait, wait. I always couldn't figure out how yeah. to pay your, for all those rehabs. <laughs> your dad who we're shitting on all the time? <laughs> oh, I love my dad. Who've been taking care of you well, all those years? No, the, the nursing home company. Oh, okay, right. got it. So, so, but Graham Parsons said, I love George Jones. I love Merle Haggard. I love the Rolling Stones. I love the Beatles. I'm going to... Be an alchemist and mix them together. And he loved soul, soul music. Yes. He incorporated that too. And he, the first thing that he did really didn't hit the mark. I know you were a part of the Burrito Brothers. Well, the International Submarine Band was But when Grievous Angel comes out, that invents a genre of music that you know is the Eagles, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The most popular strand of classic rock there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And you were there, and I just always wondered, is it because he didn't have to worry about making money? It had a lot to do with that, but that's also what killed him. What? Well, he had enough money to buy as many drugs as he wanted. You, you know, know he died of drug addiction? Oh, yes, he, 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 had, yeah. he had all five drugs in his system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but so, he was so important. How come, you weren't there? how come you didn't go to the desert with him uh, and save him, well, Pamela? When, 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 when he you got, saved him several times, I'll bet. But when he got that far gone, I just didn't want to be around. It hurt my. It was killing me to see him like that. How long? And he had progressed to getting yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. He's probably one of the greatest geniuses the you greatest, ever lived. yeah yeah he, he's he would sit people down he sat me and mercy down my gto friend demanding that we listen to george jones waylon jennings merle haggard ray price willie and he made us sit there these are like hippie girls from laurel King. Uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> we were and then we we revered him so much and adored him we said okay we'll we'll listen because i thought they were just crew cut assholes you know right and I, rednecks but, uh, and, yeah, yeah but I was my I was so expanded by this. I owe so much to Graham just for that, for turning me on to George Jones, man. And and it was it was the most expensive. Were you there when he made Grievous Angel? I was at burrito sessions. Right. My time with Graham was mainly at so, burritos. But I did see rehearsals of the Grievous Angel and I did see him sing with Emmy Lou. But my time with him was in the burritos. Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so she's there. Then she's the, the, the beginning of Led Zeppelin. Then she's there when the Rolling Stones become good because I have this yeah, theory that, that the Rolling Stones became good when Keith Richards became heroin. <laughs> I, th- I think that may be associative, not causation. They, they were the Just, best with Mick Taylor. Yes, that's, that's, that's when it is. And that's, that's when, when I it was is. hanging out with him, yes. Right. So and, the history so, of rock right here. I and know. not to mention Beefheart and Zappa. Yeah, Beefheart. The beginning. I met Beefheart in high school. That was the most life-altering thing that ever happened to me. I didn't me. know Beefheart is. Captain was Beefheart Captain made a record Beefheart. called Trout Mask Replica in 1968. That's a masterpiece, a forethought. It's always on the list. It's a of forethought of what's to come. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so far ahead that he was behind. You know what I mean? He was. They thought he was <laughs> mentally ill. <laughs> 
<laughs> but he was, I was his fan club president for the Valley chapter in 1965. Oh my God. Yeah. So I was altered way before I started taking drugs by him. By his vision of things. Uh, yeah. Was he mentally ill, you think? Uh, no. I don't think he was mentally ill. He just thought differently than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> what? Were you giving a look? He, He's he, a visionary, Drew. A total visionary. Yeah. Oh, my God. He had a vacuum cleaner. He, he microphone is. a vacuum cleaner. And he Say, is. this has a great sound. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Frank Zappa did, too. <laughs> yeah. And I was very, very early with those characters. Was as much sex as people think going on? I don't think it was as much sex. You know, I just had the most revelatory experience. I thought that I'd probably slept with a couple hundred people. Right. I mean, I just, I mean, I lived during that time and I was very free spirit. But it turns out you didn't. Did not you? at all. I, I mean, I, I, I saw the number that Michael was, my ex husband, yeah. right? And I went, oh my God, I'm a virgin compared <laughs> to what I thought I was. <laughs> That's good. I was really surprised. Yeah, my mom. I, was, I mean, compared to people but I But again, knew, that, but maybe that was the cultural environment where you were already being made to feel guilty for any activity. I never felt guilty about anything. But, uh, but my mom was Honestly, there. I did not. Yeah. I did not. My mom was there, too. Guilty. My mom lived with Cass at the Stanley house, whatever, right? And she said, I thought I slept with everybody. And then later on, when she was doing a, a, a she look was back in her life, she list. was like, I didn't really sleep with as many people yeah. as I thought I did. Exactly. And I was really stunned. What well, was wow, the number? good for me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the number. It I'm wasn't 200. Way less than 200. Nowhere near 200. <laughs> nowhere near it. Okay, so it was like, yes. wow. So I think that's one of the myths of rock and roll is that there's sex going on all the time. In my generation, there wasn't. Well, there was. I, there was. I witnessed a lot of it, and I have friends who did sleep with a thousand people. Oh, my there God. Were, yeah. There Will were Chamberlain? Your friends there with there Will there Chamberlain? Were, there were a lot of orgies. There were a lot of people sleeping with several people a night. I never... That's I, crazy. I was too much of a lover. Of a, I wanted to be in love. Individual. I wanted to be in love, right. and I never, ever... But that extreme to, activity sounds like drug addiction and... Bipolar and that kind of stuff. That's where the extreme behaviors no, go. No, well, maybe. Yeah. But but it was also the era. Just do what you want. Like you were mentioning, you know, yeah. just just do whatever you want. But, I mean, I didn't want to ever hurt anyone. And people I knew. See, if you didn't care, you could hurt a lot of people. Well, here's, easily. Pamela, this is an interesting thing happened to me. When I started to make records and be on the road, I, I you know, you think that's going to happen. And when it does, you're kind of imp- just kind of thinking like I can't believe that you just mean happened. Groupies? You mean yeah, well, gals, gal pals. <laughs> no, <'cause... laughs> so I, so I Groupie slept, is a I good slept, word. I slept with this girl. I remember in Minnesota, and the next morning I was at her house, and this is early on in my career. And I remember her saying, "We have we have a bunch of mutual friends." And I said. Oh my God, who? And she named two other singers of other bands from LA. And I remember just thinking, oh my God. She also she does slipped. this with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that ended my groupie stuff. And I became a girlfriend guy, girlfriend oh. guy. I'm serial monogamist. It's uh-huh. called. Once I got to therapy, well, that, it's called serial monogamy. That's what I am too. Yeah, I yeah. always have been. Only, you know, I was very young and I thought I was in love with all these different people. Like my my list of my first five people or six is amazing. I mean, my first lover was Nick St. Nicholas from Steppenwolf, who I'm still very friendly with. Second was Noel Redding, Jimi Hendrix Bass experience. Player. Third was Chris Hillman. Oh my God! Yeah, oh yeah. No Law. wonder you were around the Bruno oh, yeah. Brothers. Law. <laughs> long He's the other term. guy in the Bruno Brothers. Yeah, that Brothers. was a long, long, long term relationship. Was it? Yeah. And fourth was I guess it was Jimmy Page. And then Mick Jagger. These are this was my first five people wow. that she slept with because I was in that world. What's going That's on with Mick Jagger? Are you hear anything today? Nah, he's w- an old. With who? He's an old no, guy. No, Mick Jagger. Now. They canceled their tour. He's oh, got health, oh, health, oh, I didn't health know issues. That. Yeah, something's going on. Oh my god, I hope not. He's a, he's, he's a so businessman too. Oh, he yeah. doesn't cancel shit for nothing no, unless it's serious. No, he does not, <laughs> and he's very very smart, and he never got out of line with drugs. No, never. Everyone around him did. Same with Robert Plant. He never got out of line with drugs. Right. Yeah. Did so. you try to save some people from drugs? Oh, yeah. How'd that go? <laughs> not, mm. not very well, I'm thinking. Well, <laughs> it normally goes great, Bob. <laughs> well, I think I was a good influence on my ex-husband, Michael. Right. Yeah. I think I was a real good influence. I, th- I think I was a good influence on some people. 
Right. Not on everyone. So once Graham starts going off the deep end with heroin, you just thought, oh, I yeah, can't watch I can't. that? Yeah, exactly. Is I it, just it's loved hard to be somewhere. around that. It, it, well, he was on everything. Yeah. It wasn't but, just but that shows she's not codependent. She's not trying to save him. Right. Right? Yeah, right. Not I, trying to save him. He's right. just like, nobody can save him. I just can't watch it. Because what happened with him is at a time when he should have been the performer that he was two years before, he couldn't even perform. Yeah. There's tapes of him singing concerts live on the radio where he can't even sing. Mm. It's crazy how high he must and have been. And his voice was so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, and when he died, he had morphine, cocaine, pot, barbiturates. And alcohol in his system. Wow. Top five of the day. (laughs) Yeah. I remember reading. I remember reading. Didn't have benzos yet. How did you hear about it? A friend called me, and it wasn't a surprise. It It wasn't a surprise. No. no. It was. Last time I actually saw him, he was standing at the Troubadour on the phone when they used to have a phone in the lobby. Yeah. And he was trying to find his dealer. He was just. And he was so. I wrote in, I'm with the band, that his, his, you know, his hands were the most beautiful things, and beautiful hands I've ever seen. And they were long. I mean, and one time he actually was looking at him. He came to the GTO session, and he said, I don't know. I expect to see stitches around my wrist. Mm. I have no idea where they came from. I mean, his hands were that beautiful. Oh. But in I'm with the band, I said, his hands were hanging beside him like forgotten flowers. Mm. So he was sad. And, he was, and how p- a fast a period of time? Three years? He was 26, years? you know. Yeah, I know. But how when far from... Yeah. Oof. But how far from when he was a high-functioning person till that moment? Three years? <sighs> couple years. couple years. Yeah. They go down that fast. Yeah, a couple years. Because Again, he had the money the to money get whatever and then, he and then, wanted. And then not, no consequences. And people didn't yeah. really understand what this was. And there was then. no rehab. They didn't understand what this was. Hey, it's just, it's just him. The, he's just the heroin addict guy. Yeah. Yeah. But what, uh, yeah, well, well, you were with another heroin addict who ended up, you know, making seven in a row of the greatest albums ever made. <laughs> Are you talking about <laughs> Jimmy Page? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was an off and on heroin. Oh, he, was he really oh, only no. off and on? Oh, oh yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Oh my god, it wasn't consistent. You learn no. something new every day. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you the story. So I meet. I read Keith Richards' the Life book. Yeah. Did you read it? Yeah. Nah, you weren't interested. In it. So in one point, he's talking about shooting up. And he's talking about intermuscular, right? Yeah. And I'm like, well, why would he do that? And then I'm just <laughs> skimming around, and it turns out that's all he ever did. He never shot drugs the way that I and Perry and Anthony and the next generation did. Yeah. Never mainline. Wow, really? I, did. I don't know. And that's that's incredible. incredible. What does that mean? Shot, to get the rush. Shoot, you don't yeah. get the rush. Shooting his muscle as yeah. opposed to shooting in the vein. Okay. That's that's how the old jazz people did it. You know, one of the things that, that in the history of dope, which is yeah. my, yours is groupies, <laughs> mine's dope. Okay. So Billy Holiday. Because he did it that way? Because we always he, say that he, he. Yeah, that's why he could survive 25 years of yeah. doing it like ooh, that. Ooh. Keith yeah. Richards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Not that we want to promote that. that we don't want to promote that. No, we that. don't want to promote that. <laughs> but, you know, let, let's change the subject. He yeah. said Mick Jagger had a small dick. Do you remember when he said that? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell me he doesn't. No, he does not. But, I, but, but, but I'm telling you. I'm so no. glad you found that out. Yeah. Keith, I always figured he did have a big dick. No, so. Keith. Mick Jagger? No, he yeah. has a regular dick. But a I'm regular telling, dick. I'm telling, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's not small. Way, no. And, and Keith put it out to the world that he... Mick had a, a small You can dick. see that she's, Miss Pamela is firmly in the Mick Jagger camp of that the Richards camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in the <laughs> Keith Richards camp. Well, he, he was <laughs> always great to that? me. Mick Jagger it's was an always great to me. Because they were, they were having big fights. Yeah. They broke yeah. up. <laughs> yes, and, but, but he said that. I mean, you, that's something you don't announce to the public, even if that was true. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, so... so <laughs> no, Drew, Drew would. <laughs> See, he's a heroin addict and he's pissed. <laughs> yeah, he's going to go... Mick was never an addict of any kind. Yeah. Maybe no, but Keith Richards, Richards. Oh, yeah. is just going to go well, nuclear. Well, right? Well, I, I I actually had to set it straight. I got so much publicity. <laughs> this was probably, you know, when the book came out. Right. And I, I, I had a publicity, public, publicist friend, and she put it out there that I said that was absolutely false. Oh. And I got so much press, press that, out of that. That's the best press. I right bet there. Mick was very happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> <I bet. laughs> to come into his... Uh, <laughs> Male defense that's or whatever. Correct. His manhood. I, Defended his manhood. Yes, that's right. In a literal sense. But correct. Let's go back to Led Zeppelin because those guys concern me, right? That's, I, yeah. Yeah, it's a group. So, that, so when Led Zeppelin, Drew read the book 
uh, Hammer of the Gods. Correct. It was a bad mistake because now he just thinks they're the worst people in the world. I, 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 <laughs> I, right. I wonder why. So, why did Richard Cole? Well, that's written by why Richard Cole. Been why did down he? By me too. Why did he exaggerate Led Zeppelin's? Amoral behavior, or did he? He didn't ex- exaggerate it. See, Bob? He did. He did. No, he did. Not. <laughs> I did, Malala. Then why aren't they being <laughs> why aren't they being extradited and put in prison in this country? They right. didn't. I was never on the receiving end of that stuff. Uh, Jimmy well, treated me with amazing respect. He was. I was one of his girlfriends. You know, and that those stories were never about Jimmy, Robert, or John Paul Jones. Mm. They were. It was Bonzo. And the, and the roadies. That's it. Oh, the right. band did not participate in any of that really and sleazy the, the stuff. The drummer she's talking about died at 29 of alcoholism. Uh, 31. Okay. 31. Oh, t- 31. Wow. Yeah. And that's hard. If you're a lifetime drinker from oh, yeah. 13 yeah. to die of alcoholism. Oh, yeah. It's rough. I mean, that's yeah, Bon that's, Scott that's, territory. Yeah. Right. And and you know yes Jimmy was with I think a lot of them were with underage girls but it was different at that time. I know. <laughs> it doesn't matter, though. No. Those it, girls that I knew, Sable and Lori and those girls, who are really proud of the, their history I, and glad they did that. Now. To this day. To this day. Yeah. 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 I was trying to tell you that the other day. You know, uh, We were discussing it while I fell asleep. <laughs> Well, I, I can put him to sleep so easily <laughs> with my with my. But she was trying. She, I, you still did. You you changed my view a little bit. How you about didn't. how about just look at it this way? A seventeen year old girl in nineteen seventy five is, is a same. lot more mature no. than a seventeen year old no. girl in two thousand nineteen. I, I believe it's a that. different kind of maturity. It's a whole other level. We, we can't even compare those. 50 years so ago. So you, you've been no a mentor to women over the last three yeah. decades. What do you say to women who come to your writing thing and they want to work out their issues of what happened to them? How do you, how They write it out. They write and it they out. They write it out. A lot of them have, are writing memoirs and uh, doing so well with ex- expressing that stuff. Don't they generally start to think a little less idealized of these events <laughs> as they write it out? It looks a little more... Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes That's they do. That's what I would think. Yeah. That's what I would Sometimes think. they do. Because they're I, being exploited. No way. Well, that, those young girls we're talking about. Were I, I, they wanted to be there. I, no, I get that. but that's They, just they the way, put themselves no, there. But just the way these, a 15-year-old these, wants to be with her teacher. Well, she, the, they wanted to be with the teacher. These guys did and not that, chase after these young girls. The teacher didn't chase after that 15-year-old. She pushed herself on him. Yeah, but that's a teacher. Rodney uh, Bingenheimer's club was... Bacchanalia. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. And, you know, I Rodney's love Rodney. English I love disco Rodney. Yeah. Was called. But that's where most of that stuff went. That's where With they the met younger, those girls. The younger yeah, kids. That's where they met those kids. And, you know, when that started happening, I, w- I was out of there. It was like 73, 4. Luckily, I met Michael in 74, and it was time How to get out. How old were you? How old was I when? When that started happening? Uh, I, was, I was 19 and a half before okay. I got my first. Taste. Taste of <laughs> Nirvana. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so all for sex, man. But so how do you how do you how do you mentor young women nowadays? There's a different mentality, right? Well through through the writing. I have young I I have eighteen to eighty four. I know. I see your website. In my, in my like classes. all the teaching. She goes all over the country I know, and teaches. It's, it's amazing. And it's 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 liberating and it's freeing it's, to tell your story yes, and be it, and your narrative. It's, so it's almost like a therapy. A, it's so a therapy. important and not feel guilty. Yeah, and share. Do you tell in, them in a room where other women have been through the same kind of thing, had the same kind of feeling? Oh, I understand what that. Oh, okay. And then you know, it it lessens whatever the the load angst is, was. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's a very healing thing. And totally. Th- yeah, but there must be some people that come to you that are very angry and they want they want to remain angry and feel victimized, right? Or no? No, I have a certain energy that I, I draw a certain type of people to me. I, if you read, I'm with the band. It's a very uh, uplifting story. It's not. Any, yeah, it is. Even though I've had my heart broken over and over, mm-hmm. and you know, and and my second uh, memoir. Is also uplifting, even though my marriage broke up, my father dies, and all that stuff. And people relate to it, though. It's very human stuff. But I don't go down the the wicked rabbit hole ever. I never. That's just my nature, anyway. So, is it safe to say, in all the rock icons that you knew, like I'll just go down the list: Jim Morrison, you know, Graham Parsons, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, Mick Jagger, 
those those are solid people. You think they're caring people? Hang on. We have to take a quick break. Oh, my God. We'll have you answer when we get back. <laughs> well, CBDs are everywhere, right? Everyone's talking about them. And it's a topic that I get asked about all the time. Bottom line on CBD, although there are way more claims made about them, the clinical evidence right now, mm, it's not all that clear. But many people are using it and reporting great results. And they are very encouraging. So I want to first define exactly what I'm talking about here. CBD is cannabidiol, an extract from hemp. While you might associate with marijuana, CBD does not cause reinforcement. It is not the reinforcing component of hemp, but it is what's responsible for the calming or some of the relaxing effects that many people experience, not the high. Now about the products. There are a ton of them on the market today. For getting the vast array of the reported health benefits, it's important to be aware of what you're buying. I was recently introduced to a company called Select CBD, an Oregon-based company that focuses on high-quality ingredients and manufacturing standards, not the hype. Their CBD-based products are available in a wide range of formulations and flavors, each of which is described to you so you can make an informed decision without all those promises that are probably too good to be true. Like I said... The reported benefits of CBD by individuals using this are very compelling. I'm excited to see how things develop as the science catches up with this booming industry. As usual, the public is ahead of the science. I can't make explicit claims yet, but boy, the reports are pretty encouraging. So if you're ready to try CBD, I encourage you to check out Select CBD. To learn more, go to drdrew.com slash select. That's on my site, drdrew.com slash S-E-L-E-C-T. And for a limited time, you can save 25% at checkout with the code Dr. Drew, D-R-D-R-E-W. Again, Drew.com slash select, and then the code D-R-D-R-E-W. And we're back. That was a teaser. So, so, <laughs> Ooh, you're getting good at this, are, Drew. Are these, <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated by Jim Morrison. Was he a caring person? But go ahead. Uh, well, Jim Morrison, when he wasn't drinking, was right. his sweetheart. Um, but he turned into a monster when he drank, like Bonzo also did. Right. And so you see alcoholism as causing a lot of the of the bad things that you hear about these people's behavior. Yeah, I think alcohol was worse than drugs in a lot of ways wow. back then. Because right. because I saw it alter people. Ugh, cocaine's the, the devil too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I saw it alter people. I I knew them both ways. So right. Um, yeah, I was not so a big fan. Jim of... Morrison was an army brat, right? He went around yeah. the army his whole. But life. he he really truly was a poet. He wanted to be seen as a poet. He saw the whole rock star thing as a short lived. Do you think it was a dead end street? How... Well, he just didn't he certainly care did that it much. The best you, of you anybody. Had... I know. <laughs> But you have to remember for something you he invented no, I know. the icon rock star, I know. and he That's... thought it was like I think it'll last yes. a few months. Yeah, <laughs> he really did. But but you got to remember in the fifties the the writer was the rock star of the day, right? Writers were elevated above Norman Mailer and yeah, right. oh, it's especially Elvis was the, was Jay, well, but J D. Salinger and I mean Hemingway. in New York City, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. writing was that was how you esta- distinguish yourself. They were yeah. even on talk shows then. They don't have yeah. them on there anymore. So, so <laughs> just, this is something yeah. that I know. The iconic figure of Jim Morrison with leather pants and no shirt on. Right. Gloria Scott, who you knew, the drug counselor from Venice, I think. Michael was friends with her. Uh-huh. She was my mentor and okay. saved me and a bunch of people. She was friends with him and said he only looked like that for like about four months when he was on speed. <laughs> uh, then he gained a bunch of weight. <laughs> no, that, that's, that, that's, I mean, but that's is that an exaggeration? Yes. But he only he looked, looked like, like that. that for about a year and a half. But before that, he was a stocky UCLA kind of kid, right? Yeah. Well, he was cute, though. Come on. But yeah, cute face, but uh, yeah. he was not thin as a rail rock star no, icon. No, and I, he wasn't really a speed freak either. I was hanging out with him How in did the he get early so days. Okay, early days. Well, he was a kid. He was so a kid. So he had baby fat on him? No, no. He was a <laughs> sleek kid. He was a kid. He was? Yeah, when I knew him, he was 20, 21, 22. It was early days, first album, and he was. That was his most beautiful time. Yeah, he was. But uh, I, in Hollywood, since I lived there, I was one of the people who would step over him uh, in the gutter because he became that. Right by the country store? Uh, Because he lived behind the country store, Yeah, he did, but right in front of How fast did that happen? Uh, Well... Two, three, he was four dead years. in th- he, was he was dead in four years. Yeah, so it yeah, had to have yeah, been yeah. like from the it time their album comes fast. out till he dies is four years. True. How but crazy it, is that? But it was alcohol. It was alcohol. Right. So, but a friend of mine. He owns- was never a big drug head or anything. He, it was alcohol. So we just saw him get fat 
and miserable and bloated and bearded and angry. Mean. Yeah. What did he mean to you? No one was mean to you. He was mean to me. Really? But he wasn't in his right mind. I never blamed him because I knew him, the real one. And then I'd see okay. the guy on alcohol. Okay, so he said the iconic thing that Perry and Anthony and Iggy Pop and everyone else are trying to reenact is Jim Morrison, right? The other thing is that just that rock musicians need to get skinny. The the idea, the iconic <laughs> thing of a musician being skinny, that's what Scott Weiland had an eating yeah. disorder. A lot, oh, I, yeah? I did. Oh, yeah. A lot of really? guitar players do. A lot that's of, where the a lot of guitar in. players. Because the icons that you're thinking of are Jimmy Page in 1975, yeah, yeah. right? Right. So... So I eventually, unlike Pamela, I don't get to meet them when they're 20, but I meet them eventually, and I'm always shocked by how short they are. Oh, yeah. Well, the and Brits, I'm thinking it's easy British to be guys. fucking skinny when you're five foot three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're not that little. No, but five six or something. Jimmy and Robert are both pretty tall. Mix about five eight. It's probably five, about five seven. Yeah, now. that's small. That's small. Now <laughs> it's small yeah. compared to American well, no standards. Well, Redding and Mitch Mitchell were little midgets. I mean, some British guys were midgets. It was, yeah, there's. It's a weird thing. It's the British rock star, and they're all under six feet tall. Mm-hmm. Oh, you way know? under. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's hard to be skinny if you're six oh, feet that's tall. That's funny. Yeah. Right, different. Scott was like six, six foot, six foot one. Yeah, and he was starving himself to look yeah. like those guys. Oh, yeah, right? he was on really top thin. of the drugs that he's got anorexia. Yeah, you and forgot I, that I was the foxy lady with Jimi Hendrix in the first video. Were you? Yeah. Were you on the Naked album cover? No, <laughs> <laughs> I was too young to do that. Really? I was seventeen when I danced in the Foxy Lady video. Oh, you're kidding? Yeah. When and he I, lived in Laurel Canyon, and he too, hit right? on me, and I was like, "Ooh, I was, I've never met anyone like him ever, and I never will again, I'm sure." But I did wind up with Noel Redding, right? So and the, I was a virgin, though. And in those days, they would they waited. I said, "I'm not ready." Rock stars waited, yes. Drew. <laughs> I'm taking notes. No. <laughs> it's the '60s, man. The '60s, yeah, are 60s, good. '60s. No waiting said, in the '70s. Said, That's my said, point. I'm, I'm just not ready, Noel. You know, and we hung out and saw each other. Of course, I performed various other. Yeah, yeah, right, of course. Right. Yeah. But I was hanging on to my virginity for you know for the right person. But but I saw him for instance. A lot of these guys I saw for years. I saw Noel for years often whenever they came to town. Right. He even flew me to New York, which turned me into a super groupie. And really? So, when you get flown? And so did Jimmy Page. Yeah. Because commercial it, or in a private jet? Uh, the, it was commercial then. They didn't have their jet yet. <laughs> I'm but, just trying to paint the picture here. They, you know, <laughs> trying to if fantasize they, if, if they, <laughs> what that life is like. <laughs> First class. <laughs> <laughs> if they took you on the road, it meant that person who they were going to see there, they weren't going to see. Right. So you were a super groupie of Super groupy. So there were only three or four, I think. There was a handful. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like super groupy was just somebody's girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drew has a way of cutting to the chase. Right? Yeah. Well, I was with Keith Moon off and on. I say off and on because most of them lived in England. Yeah. Right. right. I did see Mick in England, but. So they didn't mind that you saw the other rock stars in between? Oh, God. He, you... Mick tried to tell me. Oh, he Mick was after me for the longest time because I was being true to Jimmy. I, I was always true to whoever I was with. And Mick kept saying, he's not being true to you, though. I said, but he is. He told uh. me he's on the road. He's not doing anything. And, I know. Uh. and finally, when I found out that he was not being true to me, that's when I did say okay to Mick, but. But you know, I yeah, anyway. It's in the book. It's a fun. <laughs> it's a fun life. Yes, it was a truly fun life. But it still. Do you is. have regrets? You don't have regrets, do you? I only have regrets for things I did not do, that I could have done. Like make a second record. Oh no, I couldn't have done that. Frank, Why? Frank broke the group up because they were on drugs. Oh. Frank was a only teetoter. one of them was on drugs. Frank. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Which Frank? I Frank Zappa. Zappa. Zappa yeah. I, I was. But not was on he? Drugs. See, there's a patriarchal thing. Why does he have say? Just because he puts you together and made the first he was album our producer, doesn't mean our mentor, doesn't mean our he manager. Had... He was everything. Oh. Yeah. 
and you know the band was sort of falling apart the girls were shooting heroin you know and it was mm. and i you know we it was very oh, and speed that was the worst Right. So he went, went. They got arrested. So when he. But fought. conveniently, he also wanted you to to move in with them and take care of their help, take care of their children. Well, I was the governor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was a job. They paid me. <laughs> so you did do that. Yeah, for years. Yeah, for years. Yeah. <laughs> the three kids. Moon. Uh, there were Moon, there were two at the time. Moon and who else? Moon and Dweezil. Right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. That's so she's awesome. she's she's been there the whole every Moon's moment. Got, Moon's got a bunch of kids now too, doesn't she? Moon has one daughter. One daughter. I thought she had like two or three kids. Yeah, one. That's so. Awesome. Dweezil has two. And uh, Dweezil and Zap and, and Ahmed are not talking or something. Oh hear? yeah, yeah. That's... It goes around and around and around. Yeah, something it's... about the studio. Alex Alex Winter tried to get me involved in something. It, no, it, it has to do with the estate. And That's did he is. not specifically say what's what in his will? Why is there Gale. so much fighting? It was Gale. Oh. Gail so, died three years ago. So she didn't. No, she did. And what she did, no one liked. So. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I can't get, go into it. It's none of my beeswax. Well, I get it. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's pretty public. So I, I spoke at her funeral. I was very, very close to her. She I was a mentor you. to me just as much as Frank was. Right. Aww. She kept me, my, you know, I'd come home just weeping and wailing over Keith Moon or who, someone. And she, she would make me see the humor in it. She would, she was really good with bringing me back out of, I used to get my heart broken a lot, you know, but we all did at that age, right? Was, so how nothing. did their house burn down? When did it burn? Did it burn down? They, yeah, but they, they had moved out. Oh, they had? Oh yeah. Lady so Gaga it, just bought their house up in Woodrow Wilson. Oh, on the top. Yeah, right. the, where where. But Frank's the real studio. one is right at Laurel Canyon and yeah, Lookout it Mountain Drive. Down. It burned. I mean, probably within two years after they moved, and it's never been rebuilt. See, hmm. the history of Laurel Canyon's really, you you know, because you have to live there to hear every story from somebody who knows. I mean, you yeah. know a lot of it. Yeah, I do. But the window where Joni Mitchell is looking outside yeah. the window oh, during yeah, the sure. album cover. There's f- several mean, books every, about it. Everywhere <laughs> you go. A different house represents not one history, three yeah. histories. But, uh, Old Hollywood, Robert Old Mitchum Hollywood, got arrested yeah. here for pot, yeah. well, and then the b- monkeys moved in. <laughs> <laughs> That's old, true. Old, but there, here's Charlie Chaplin's house. Yeah. Right. And here's Houdini's, Houdini's thing house. Yeah, yeah. But that was right across from yeah. Zappa's house, yeah. which belonged to Tom Mix, the cowboy. Oh, wow. It was a, bit, a, a full log cabin. Why do you figure they – one of the things I try to figure out when I've been on these some of these – Estates, what the hell? Why did it, they? They were ten miles from the beach. What made them put the stuff in this little canyon? It's so weird to me. I know. It's I think it was because it was close to Hollywood. So yeah, one of the right things, the yeah, but right then why? The then why not the hill facing Hollywood? Why in so, the canyon? You'll know. In the canyons, it's just. I mean, think about that Chaplin house. It's in a hillside in a dark corner of the canyon. I know. It's so weird. It it's was Southern very California. arty. Very arty. It was a. It there was, was a, a lot of pot communal, going on. There. It was cheaper a too. Communal. <laughs> scene you know everybody was creative it was outside the city limits for one thing it wasn't oh, so within could, the city they could do stuff they could do stuff oh okay that, was well, that explains thing. a little that's bit that's <laughs> the robert mitchum houdini era yeah. what does so that mean they could, they could do, do drugs. pot. Pot <laughs> uh-uh. is, was, you know, pot was super yeah, pot, illegal. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. super illegal. So one day I'm looking to get a bigger house. I, the house was small, and there was this house for rent. I go to it, and it's you'll you'll know when you're coming up Laurel Canyon from Sunset. You know that white house that seems like it's on stilts, right as you come around by, by the store by, before or? Lookout Mountain between oh. the store and Lookout. Yeah, if you yeah. look up, there's a weird yeah. white wooden house. Yeah. So I go to look at it. <laughs> It's Lead Belly's original home. Lead <sighs> Belly lived in Laurel Canyon. Who's the, the oh. great, the, one of the greatest songwriters who ever lived. He wrote Good Night Irene. Blues, he wrote, blues guy. B- b- yeah, blues guy. Nice. And so it's just multi generational. Well, then as you go up the hill and over and look out, now you've got Sharon Tate and all this other stuff. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, isn't that what that's happened? That's Beverly Hills. But isn't that yeah, what that's happened? Beverly Hills. Yeah, where were you I that day? <laughs> that was Charles Manson. I know. Where, was, did you know him? You must have known him. I didn't know him. He was a phony. He was a pretend hippie. I know, but did you ever? He come wanted at- to have sex with young girls, and he pretended to be a hippie. You know, and did you had- ever see him at parties or see him around? No. I knew Bobby Beausoleil. That's as that, close oh, as I got. God. I used to make out with him in San Francisco. Oh, that's so sad. And then he killed people. It was like what? What? That guy must have had such incredible power. He was a hypnotist as well, I believe. That's what I think. Well, he was a. 
He was psychotic, and he was knew had to prey on the right people, yeah. Yeah. and he was yeah. a persuasion expert. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. hypnosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Until, but you know, that's people say he ended the '60s. That in Altamont, which I happened to be there with Mick. Were you scared? That's what I was going to. We'll ask tell them what happened. That's out. what I was going to end I, with. Well, that, were I'm you not scared? Sure Non-Californians know what's Altamont. Altamont. See, I was too young. Was a free know, concert yeah. the Rolling Stones were going to give after Woodstock had happened. Like a California version of Woodstock. And they used the Hells free. Angels for their security. Yes, they I don't used think Hell's they Angels. planned on it. Okay. It kind of evolved that. into no, no, that. No, no, they hired them. They hired them? Yeah. Because, the, <laughs> because they thought... Whose idea was that? Jerry Garcia's idea? Uh, no, I think it was actually the Stones' idea. They were naive about who, who they really were. I'm oh, telling you. Oh, my God. So, that makes yeah. sense to me. So, so they, you know, they, I stayed for the burritos. That's how much Keith loved Graham. Right. He let the burritos play. I saw them. The dead played too. Did yeah, you but see I, the dead? I left. I left. You because were scared. Was such bad vibes. Bad vibes. I could feel the vibes. Was the vibe between the Hell's Angel and the audience? Just, or yes. the audience was and the Hell's Angels and, and heroin. The heroin had arrived in San Francisco about a year and Probably. a half earlier. I mean, I, I was. I'm, I'm I never so, used heroin. I'm so curious. I've not heard this described before. Was the audience felt unruly, or did it feel what? What was that? What did you? The, I, I just. It, it was tense. It was really tense, and for me to leave before the Stones even came on, you can imagine how it was bad it was. It too big a crowd for the venue. Or it, it was outside. Yeah, but but, I mean, but it was no, the crowd wasn't too big. But the Hell's Angels were pushing everyone around. Okay, okay. The Hell's and they were taking uh, speed and drinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. and getting more and, yeah, and, physical. And, and they thought they were big shots being hired by they the Stones. Were, they were. They were. <laughs> so so anyway, so they pushed that's they a were, woman that they, don't give a fuck right there <laughs> so they were pushing us all around and one of them threw a beer on me and i had a really gorgeous outfit on because i'm gonna see mick right so i left i just hitchhiked out of there and i called mick was there anybody leaving there no <laughs> how hard was I, it to I, get a ride well people were passing by a couple people probably felt the vibes like i did because i got a ride to the stones hotel i waited around till i thought the gig would be over and i called him and he said come you better come right up here and that's when i heard what happened i didn't know he oh they already me. knew that he the guy me. got killed yeah the guy got killed stabbing. right Right in Static. front of them. By one of the by the hell's angel. The hell's no, angel. It wasn't a hell's angel. Oh, was it? It was just a drunk jerk. Wait, I think I've seen the video the of the video. hell's angel guy doing this. It's not a hell's angel. I really don't believe. Huh? No. It's, but but the guy supposedly had a gun, and then yeah. that's in when Mick Jagger. There's a moment where Mick Jagger is watching that footage that you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. and they're trying to figure out if the guy really has a gun. Yeah. Mm. And you just see this like, what the fuck is this become? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That I'm watching oh, a I videotape yeah. to see if the guy really uh, was trying to shoot me. Yeah. Or, or, I know. You know, how did it go from free love two years ago yeah. to this fucking shit? The 70s. <laughs> well, the 70s, baby. <laughs> That's it, Bob. I've been telling you all along. Now you, now you with me? That day, I walked in this room. It was Graham and Keith kind of leaning into each other. They'd already started turning into each other. And the Stones, a couple roadies, and Michelle Phillips. That's the only people in the room. And I just walked in, and I went, oh, my God, what has happened? And then Mick told me what has ha- what happened. And he said, I, I can't do this anymore. I have to quit. hang this up. I'm going to quit. I mean, it was so heavy. music because the so idea was heavy. the guy with the gun was going to kill him. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was just too – it was just all the, the fact that anyone died there was mm-hmm. so – outlandish at the time and so unparalleled you know so how did everybody read yeah, now we just have mass on? shootings at these events we don't really yeah. care <laughs> one, one stabbing. what's the big deal what's that's the big horrible. deal that's now, horrible now we have guys open with automatic weapons i mean think about that i, I know. know let's think about las vegas for a second oh. i don't have, I want people to ever forget that friends of mine no. were on the crew just there awful it awful, was like awful it, it, one guy described to me he felt like you were in one of those shooting games where you're trying to run where do you run to like mm-hmm. a like the paintball, paintball thing. Uh, I know. I know. Like where, and uh, you're just seeing people laying on the ground dead uh, around you. And that's now common. But in 1969 oh, yeah, or 70, Mick Jagger was contemplating 69. quitting playing 69. music because of one person yeah. got stabbed. Yeah. yeah. He that's probably crazy. changed his venue after that or he had a better. Well, it was outside. You know, for, for, I've got to give Mercy some credit here. Mercy does tarot cards. My, my girl, Miss the GTOs. Mercy, is one Miss of the Mercy. GTOs. Yeah. She, she was one of the reasons why the GTOs never made a second record. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she is. <laughs> she is. 
She is, but I love her anyway. Yeah, we love her. um, We were were hanging out with the Stones one night at their rental house. Peter Tork rented them a house in Laurel Canyon. And um, Peter Tork they were monkeys. Yeah, yeah. I thought his name was York. Sorry. And they they uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting around the fire, and I was dancing with Mick to Beggar's Banquet. He was playing it for, for the first time. Anyway, she read their tarot cards. She read Keith's tarot cards, <laughs> and it came up the tower at the end. And she said something's going on that you guys probably should know about. She said, "Are is are you planning any kind of secretive?" Anything secretive coming up that people don't know about or something you're doing? And Keith said, well, yeah, we're doing Altima. We're doing a free concert. People don't know about that yet. It's free. And she said, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. See, the heroin <laughs> addicts know, Drew. <laughs> wow. Keen survival instincts. <laughs> yes. And, and he said, it's all in my diary, so I remember it very vividly. He said, oh, we, it's too late. We have to do that. We're doing that. And then Did Mercy happened. go with you? She didn't go. No, she didn't She go. didn't go, <laughs> see? And there was free dope there, and she didn't go. <laughs> like, who knows what she was doing? She was, she was with Al Green in those days. Yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. She, she loved the Soul Brothers. So, yes, uh, she did. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis? You, you had time with Elvis, too? No, no, I did not. I saw him play, but I could have. That's one of my regrets. I could have been with Elvis. But I had just met Michael, and I was engaged mm. for the first time. Real well, second time, but the first one didn't count. And uh, Larry Geller, Elvis's hairdresser and, and spiritual guidance guy, called and said, Elvis wants some girls to come hang out and watch TV with tonight. You watch TV? That's what he used to well, say. He used to yeah. Say. But, but apparently. But Susan, apparently, would yeah, you have right. gone? <laughs> I, probably. Yeah, she would have gone. I would have gone. I would have gone. But but she he apparently was kind to them when they got there. Yeah. They, they didn't want to watch TV and well, or they wanted to watch TV. Like no, okay. he never pressured anyone. Yeah, like, yeah. He never had to. He was please. Elvis. Right. But anyway, a friend of mine went in my place and she had a really lovely time. And like you said, nothing untoward happened. But I thought the way I felt about Elvis that it would yeah. because and of you. I, yeah, and I was. Engaged to Michael, so right. I said no. So I regret you did this. Did not let the train leave the station. If you were single, Smart. it would have been different. Yeah. Well, later I told Michael about it. He said, "What the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have gone." <laughs> <laughs> Your husband. Yes. <laughs> you know we we, we it's are seventies. We, we, oh <laughs> we are Elvis fanatics, Michael and I both. Yeah. He has a radio show. I was yes. On. Michael great. wanted me to tell you he'd yeah, love, love to him. be on your show. Oh yeah, we should have him. He's he has greatest. five million followers on that yeah, show. Yeah, nice. amazing. Is it a podcast or a radio? No, show? A radio. no he's on it's XM. A, a oh, yeah. radio show. He's on great. Little Stevens Underground yeah. Garage. Yeah, and he's okay. the greatest. Okay, next. Yeah, Where's Michael sure? DeBars, right. Detective. First album, Detective. Silverhead. Bought it. Man. Well, I didn't know Silverhead about Silverhead, were the but best. I bought the first album, the Detective album, because it was on. Swan Song, Swan Song yeah. Records. Oh boy, which we is have, Led Zeppelin's that, that's label. That's how long I knew them. I knew them for so long. I still know Robert, but Jimmy, no, no one knows him anymore. Why? You know, well, he he disappears. He's a isol- He isol- completely isolated. He. Have you seen him lately? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. in a he's in his own world. I mean, the, they have the, really young he, girlfriends still. Yeah, he does have a yeah. nineteen-year-old girlfriend. No, she's in her twenties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she okay. is the poet girl. I don't know. She's a beautiful Brazilian yeah. girl. He may I just guess. want to know. avoid public scrutiny for all that. Yeah, but but I think that there was no see to be a doctor. Your life is mapped out for you. Mm-hmm. There's no there was no roadmap for what these musicians were doing. The whole thing right? was oh, uh, it was so brand new. And then so brand new. and then it hasn't ended. And I keep thinking it like ended? it hasn't ended because the people that started after them say the Sex Pistols, Steve Jones, friend of ours, the the first generation hasn't stopped yet. So we're they're just all following like how do you age gracefully as a rock musician? Nobody's say. really they're said how to it, do it. Though. But you look at Mick Jagger, you mm-hmm. look at He it. hasn't stopped doing what he's doing. I know doing. Bruce Springsteen. Mm-hmm. But, the but Eagles, these the, you're, people you're are my age, and they're doing it, man. You're, but you're, they're doing it for people our age. You know what I mean? No. no. The but there's not, a beginning, there's not a beginning, middle, no. and end. They're I, all ages. I have so many of my young girls. 
They'll go see Paul McCartney. They'll save up their money. Yeah, you the know. Paul McCartney played I mean, Coachella. Yeah, it was God, crazy. Yeah, I, you know, they, it it's all people. ages. All yeah, ages all see ages. these people. But do you understand? They make was... more money than any of the younger acts. But most people, yeah. like your friend Jim Morrison, your friend Jim Morrison, said, this is just a fad. It's, gonna play. it's going well, on 50 years well, later. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He, did, he never said it was a fad. Yeah, but it's just he, like. He said to him, it didn't mean that much. Mm. And he was a poet. And that's what I saw him right before he went to France. And he, I was I had just done this commercial interview and I sucked real bad. And I was walking down La Cienega and he pulled up in front of me in, in a driveway in a convertible with a couple other dudes. He still had his beard and everything, but he looked a lot better. And he said, I'm going to France. I am going to write that book I told you I was going to write. I'm going. It's, my life's going to change. I'm, he was so uh, happy. What was the What's the book you wanted to write? His poetry. Just it poetry. was poetry. Yeah. Did he re- Did he publish much? No, he <laughs> died of heroin overdose. He, he there. was there two months or something. Not mm-hmm. even was it? I mean, it yeah, was a uh, tragedy, uh-huh. man. I visited. I visited his grave a couple times. Me too. Yeah. And me and you and about fifty million <laughs> other people. Are people always <laughs> always there when you go? Yeah, yes. he's yeah. buried in France. No, I know. There's, he's got Paris, his bu- a bust uh, is there and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's they, in that, and it's wine in that, bottles are there. <laughs> it's yep. in that crazy crowded. <laughs> Parisian, yeah, yeah, where Baudelaire is, yeah, yeah. and but Rimbaud, it's, it's, and but you know he's the only one in the entire there. huge cemetery that has to have twenty four hour cameras on it. Oh, really? I mean, it, you yeah, know, and they have spray painted like where you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, everybody's they, been there. Yeah, I know. God bless him. Yeah, but he thought so, he was going off to a better life. So in the end, I know that we. One thing I've learned, I thought I knew everything about you. You're a Mick Jagger girl. I'm a Keith Richards guy. I use <laughs> Keith Richards as my role model. He just recently stopped smoking and drinking. I mean, this is crazy. He's 76 years old. <laughs> no, he's very inspiring. Hope. It gives me but hope. But he has great genetics. Come on. Oh, God. Not just yeah. great genetics. He was designed in the lab. I mean, like something <laughs> we need to like figure out what's going on there. And he does give me hope anytime. Oh, you know, because I got young kids. I got to make it to 76 yeah. at least. Of course you will. Yes. And you're finally feeling great again. I am feeling good. Yeah. And I think it's because I'm taking this. We used to have the sponsor called Ber- Bergamot. And uh-huh. Drew, he thinks it's all the Bergamot. And he started, he started giving good me to money, so I took it. Which and I'm feeling better and better. Like? And I think it's because uh-huh. of that. And he tells me, it's because your hep C is cleared up from the Harvoni. And oh, now right. you're feeling better. Yeah. And I was like, that's the Bergamot. I have, <laughs> I have so many friends who've been cleared away, with hep C. Mercy. Oh, so you've gotten a lot of friends, right? Yeah, and Mer- fe- do they report feeling like they're amazing? Yeah, mercy. That's how doing I great. feel yeah. recently. Well, we can all I hype survive. myself on Yes. It? I just, you know, at PamelaDebar dot com, you can find out everything I'm doing. Where's your next writers retreat? Um, I'm going. The next one's Austin uh, and Chicago, and then Tulsa. Look at this. Do you ever New go Orleans to Orleans and Nashville? Do you ever go to university programs and? No, these girls are girls more like me. I don't know. I I, have, I speak at university sometimes. Mm. People are fascinated with my history and can't even believe that I did those things. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do them these days. You know? <laughs> Apparently, you <can't>. so, <laughs> who would you do? There's nobody worth doing. <laughs> um, I agree. Except you know, if I was younger, I would have gone after Jack White about ten years, <laughs> big time. <laughs> there but, you go. There you go. <laughs> There's only but, one rock star in the last 30 years of Jack White. I, just, I do say that. He really <laughs> yeah. is a rock star. Yeah, he is. He, like the like, thr- flash. He's the most recent one. And then b- before him, it was Kurt Cobain, really, I think. Who, yeah, but who, were you sexually attracted to him? Not really. He wasn't sexual, I, Kurt. Um, no, he was very cerebral, but I would have done him back Jack then. Is, Jack is sexual. <laughs> but Kurt <Yeah>. was... <laughs> Her yeah, he is. He's a tra- he's pretty. He's pretty. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I would be attracted yeah. to him. And also, I think Eminem was a very important. Ca- mm-hmm. You know, to me, the people who who reflect their audience and who remind their audience of who they are and how they're feeling is the great art. That's why Dylan is my god. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, he started that, in my opinion. So, mm-hmm. so you know, if 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 a, if someone doing music or art or anything does that, opens someone's solar plexus up, then they're they are important. Are you doing other art besides writing? Um, teaching. Teaching. I do rock and roll tours. I'm doing one tomorrow. 
I take a van out with the driver, and I take everybody all to all the places I did all this wild shit. Oh, oh my god, you per- that could be a huge and thing. Tell my, I bet. And tell yeah. my stories. I've been doing that it for called? ten years. But but I mean, one hundred twenty-five dollars for the day. Yeah. yeah. Did you? How big's the van? Um, I usually take a dozen people. I can see where people would I get one of those. Canyon. Yeah, because there's nothing like it. Nothing. And all those, well, the ones <laughs> that, that you see. Is that on your website? That you might yeah. get some more customers. The ones you see oh. driving all over Hollywood are just ridiculous. Do you do it? Oh, do I, you I stand do it? out in front of the whiskey telling stories of what happened to me in that room. I mean, it's unbearable. I, I saw the Who there, the Hendrix. Everyone you can imagine Zeppelin in doors, that tiny room. Doors. Well, they, many times, yeah. But you see, the I mean, doors are like nothing to her. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, I saw them. Who's the high times, school band? <laughs> Thirty times, forty times. They played my high school, but um, right. oh, really? But uh, yeah. where's your high school? Cleveland High in Reseda, Reseda, where I live now. I can walk to it. Wow. I, I thought my my mark of distinction was at Van Halen. I saw them at a prom. Oh, right, Pasadena. Mammoth. Oh, yeah. They were called Lock, Mammoth Lock then, Lock were they? No, they were Van Halen. They were called Van Halen? But they no David Lee Roth. <coughs> anyway, uh, while I'm standing out there t- telling him how I finally got a hold of Mick, whatever you want to call it, down there at the whiskey under the table, there are people driving by saying, here's the whiskey go-go. And I say, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, the tour? The TM- Another tour? The TMZ bus. <laughs> 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 well, these guys are going to jump out with the camera and interview you. Uh, we got to go. I, I got to go on that. Well, please Did do. you ever go to the – did you know the Seeds very well? Oh, yeah. Okay, so they had a house on – supposedly on Fountain and Gardener. I'm sure. That was the Thelonious Monster house. And then we were living there for years. Wow. And then all of a sudden somebody said, did you know the, the Seeds s- used wow. to live here. And I was wow. like, were have they seen, drug addicts? <laughs> have you seen Bob's yes. the, the documentary about Bob? <laughs> You would re- probably really no, like it. No, I would it. probably yeah, love it. Yeah, it's pretty it. fun. Yeah, when yeah. did that happen? Like four years ago, five years Bob ago. Bob and the Monster, it's called. It's really, but it's, 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 it's music LA and history. Hollywood. Yeah. And, okay, right. I would love to see yeah, that. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Okay, you know Stinson, Mike Stinson, my ex, is such a huge fan of yours. Oh, I love oh, he him. Would love this. He's playing in my yard. I have gigs oh. in my yard, too. He's playing on my, May 4th in my May 4th his, his at your birthday house? gig. Okay. I'll remind you. Remind me. I will. All right, Receipt is a hard roll. I'm in Claremont. You know where Claremont is? <laughs> no. That's where uh, it's in Pomona. Oh, okay. Right? Well, that's not too far from here, right? I'm that's so turned 20, around. It's like... It's, like <laughs> it's further than Reseda. <laughs> is it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we'll try to go bring the kids. Okay. We'll go. Yes, you can. It's yeah, afternoon. Yeah. It's I'll an afternoon it. thing. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much thank for you, driving sure. over thank here and doing so this. Remind everybody it. Thank you, guys. About your book and where they can I'm with the band. I'm with the band. It's my first book. I'm now writing my sixth book. They are all on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere. Podcast, Miss, Paj- Miss Pamela's Pajama Party. Miss Pamela's Pajama Party. Got to yeah. see that. And the tour. Miss Where do you Mercy's get the tour? Miss my first guest. Where do you get the tour? Um, it's all on my website. Okay. Pamela Miss Debar. Mercy, com. the tarot card reader? Yes. yes. Oh, she's around. We spent New Year's Eve she's, together. She's my first guest. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Susan, you're looking at that. Sounds like, Maybe sounds like Miss Mercy so should be my role model. Yeah. She could be. She's still alive. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> I'll let well, you wrap thank it you up. very much. Thank this, you, Pam. This is the world I live in, exciting and vibrant and alive. And, you know, I just love it. Music is music is losing its center to people's lives. Oh, and that's, yeah. that, that, that's so it sad. It makes me breaks sad. breaks my heart. And when I reconnect with yeah. someone who I know loves music as much as I do, it's just crazy. Or I talked to him about the psychedelic furs with you. He's kind of <laughs> stuck. He's kind of stuck from 1981 no. to 1985. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I, oh, I like cute. that stuff. But he I, loves it. Oh, he does. does. We all love music. Yeah, so. yeah but, but no, but I don't, I don't think people like music as much as we do. They, they don't. Do. It's not as important in people's lives because the phones have taken over and, and the internet and the and there's computers and their iPads. Meaningless have taken information over. has yeah. taken over yeah. instead yeah, of yeah. soul connection. Yeah, I agree. All right. you, don't, you mean you don't like my friend Cardi B? <laughs> you do like her a I lot. I do like her. <laughs> <laughs> Although recently we found out she's a criminal. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear this? Yeah, no, I'm she's sure. She's drugging men and robbing them when she was a stripper. Yeah, she was a, she was a stripper in New York. Yeah. What do you think goes on there, Drew? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, till next time. Right. See you later. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. All right, that's about it for this episode of This Life. Thanks for listening and subscribing on your favorite platforms. Rate us five stars and tell a friend. Also, be sure to visit drdrew.com for the latest news. We'll tell you where you can find all of our health-related content, including the latest in-depth series, The History of Opium. You can now listen to it on the Weekly Infusion podcast. We have some great and very interesting and appropriate interviews with key historical players in the history of opium. 
We're excited about our newest podcast, Doctor Drew After Dark, which has been described as a dark web reboot of Loveline. It's the hottest guest spot for all the most popular comedians. Beware, it is for a mature audience. It is kind of a reboot of Loveline. You can hear the episodes first in a podcast form Thursday. Then on Friday, you can watch all the video episodes when the YouTube page drops on the Your Mom's House YouTube channel. New episodes every week. Subscribe, tell a friend. Also on Doctor.com, you can find Swole Patrol, our health and fitness podcast with Mike Catherwood. If you want something a bit more refined that will expand your intellectual horizons, please subscribe to the Dr. Drew Podcast, where I feature a wide variety of very interesting and important guests. Get in-depth interviews there. Last but not least, me and Adam, Adam and Dr. Drew Show Podcast. It's a lot of fun, and we are still together, and you can get it five days a week. So go to drdrew.com, please tell a friend, and we thank you for it. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.